bounce, chicka bounce, chicka bounce, chicka bounce, chicka wild times. Wild times. I fell off a car one time. I wake up in the fucking hospital. They're young, they're dumb, and they're full of calm. God, we're stupid and lame. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest just spit his drink all over his computer. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? Patrick, how you doing? I'm good. Just got got in off the boat on a brisk upstate New York summer day. Beautiful. What a treat. Beautiful. That's Patrick DeLuca, executive producer, and as always, co-host of the Wild Times podcast. Peter, how about yourself? Good. Good. Glad uh, my redness has turned into a golden brown, silky smooth tan, just like my voice and personality. Thanks. What's with your side part? That's a that's a new look. I don't fucking know. What's with you looking like a werewolf? I thought you just got a haircut. Okay. You're and tan, that though. is Peter. You're <laughs> tan, always though. very aggressive. No, I'm not aggressive. Very um, angry. Nah. Yeah, very angry guy. Um, so, guys, we're back. It's Wild Times episode 11, right? That sounds yes. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And it's uh, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Peter, you're how many beers in? Uh, I had two, fell asleep, had to set an alarm to get up for this, and now I'm, I've had two more. <laughs> That's a true story, isn't it? It sure is. What are you <laughs> sipping on over there? These are Dos Equis Amber. Mm, delicious. Oh, nice. I keep thinking about trying that. How is it? It's really good. Very, very good. And it gets you drunk. So, ooh. Wow. PBR. PBR Patrick, yep. that PBR tall boy. That's, yep. uh, boy, are you allowed ounces. to drink those in New York? Is that, is that, 16 is that allowed? 16 ounces of PBR can. <laughs> yeah, baby. This is, what, this is what I'm doing. That's great, man. You really what have. A treat. T- yeah, you've turned into, uh, you know, an upstate New York trash pig. So, good <laughs> oh, job. Oh, wow. Way to, way, way to alienate people. Forrest, what about you? Nothing nothing to sip on tonight? No, I've got, I've got a La Croix. I'm drinking a La Croix, like a, like a loser. But as soon as I get through that, I will grab um, some Boochcraft out of the fridge. Ooh, That's what I'm nice. on today. Yep. Well, dude, happy happy Sunday, Forrest. Uh, we we had a pretty good week this week. A little announcement to make. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I am thrilled. So for all of our mm. listeners and for, for Peter, who definitely doesn't know anything about what Patrick and I do. Nope, um, of course not. We were nominated, Extinct or Alive, was nominated for a Critics' Choice Award, which is pretty big time in the world of television. So wow. go us. Congrats. Yeah. In the nice. best uh, best travel and adventure category, huh? Mm-hmm. That's right. We're up against um, Josh Gates, Gordon Ramsay, and then a couple like food travel type shows that I've never heard of. What, what sure, was Gordon sure. Ramsay doing in the adventure category? Adventurous food? He's, he's got a show on Nat Geo where he, it's basically, uh, Nat Geo's going to get upset if they hear this, it's basically <laughs> a direct knockoff of um Bourdain there's a little bit of a more of an adventure element to it like I said it's hilarious there's a shot of Gordon Ramsay jumping into the water out of a helicopter uh <laughs> is, is it him it's not him uh, it? I don't know but it's somehow <laughs> because that's the only way to get the ingredient for whatever he's gonna cook is to right. uh, jump out of a helicopter he, he but, could have landed uh, but he chose to jump out to get said ingredient well, or or gone to the fish market or Ralph's <laughs> right Forrest have you ever thought about becoming a chef or just an adventure? Uh, no, I, I do a ton of cooking. Um, uh, and and I won't say like Gordon Ramsay, because I'm nothing like Gordon Ramsay, but um, <laughs> in the sense of he's a much better cook. But no, I... Uh, a chef, you know, mate, I've got a Michelin star chef. chef. Sorry, Thank chef. You. Peter, as you know, I'm really into the foraging and the wild foods, all the mushrooms and the fish and all that. So yes, I, uh, you know, I like to respect those ingredients by hmm. doing them the honor of cooking them to the best of my ability. So I've actually, I'm, I'm quite, quite a, quite a closet foodie, to be quite honest. You remember when I was at your house the first time and you made us that food that I thought was chicken and it was something else? You remember that? No, you thought it. You thought it was elk, and it was chicken. It was chicken. Well, now <laughs> yeah. that I've now now that I'm more comfortable with you, I just want to let you know that it tasted like shit, and you're a horrible cook. You're lying. Just kidding. It was delicious. Yeah. Pat, Nine why are you fun. still so grim? Even though this big award you've been nominated for, like you just you've got a very just flat Who, face. Me? There's no smile, like no sparkle in your eye. Just that hat. And just, uh, <laughs> I think I, it's the camera angle. I think it's because it's shooting directly up his nose. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I can't see myself. Uh, well, Forrest, uh, four days from now, heading out mm, on an expedition. Yep. Wow. I feel like we've teased Sorry. it a lot, and it's annoying because we can't talk too much about it. Yep. But uh, it's going to be in the ocean in a very cold place. Yep. How's mm. how's prep going? Uh, how's the gear going? Because good. 
Uh, yeah. Good. Gear is the most important thing when you go on a cold weather expedition, for mm. sure. Gear saves your life every right. day. Mm-hmm. And, and with our expeditions, like there's so much trial and error with repurposing technology to do wildlife work. And the amount of gear, it's it's absolutely insane. Like I'd turn my computer around and show you guys what the floor of my office looks like right now. I mean, there's just <laughs> piles of gear and everything from things that I've been creating and cutting out myself, decoys and things like that, to this morning, I spent half of my day, and this is a little little tidbit that I'll give away. Ooh. I uh, I spent half of my day on a jet board, an electric powered surfboard that goes forty miles an hour. Holy shit! Um, which wait, moves, do you stand it, on it? Yeah, you stand what? up on it, so you have a high vantage point. It goes forty miles an hour. Um, I'll text I'll text you guys a video, but I you train I was training on it, and the reason being, Patrick. Um, when we go to said mystery location to look for said very elusive rare animals, they move (laughs) very quickly and they disappear quickly. So a kayak, you're too low to the water, right? A stand-up paddle board, you're higher up, but you're way too slow. You're never going to keep up with them. And I found this company called E-Wave, super cool guy based out of Texas, and he's hooked me up with this electric surfboard that goes 40 miles an hour that I can keep up with the animals I'm looking for, which, in you know, with glaciers and Arctic and... Man, it's gonna be nuts, <laughs> dude. Man, Forty crazy. is crazy. Yeah. So I was just I was just out driving the speedboat around, and you know it's a little choppy on the lake today. And I was topping out at thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, forty on a surfboard. Yeah, that's is crazy fast. It rips. What, like, I mean, let me be clear. It rips. Are you? It's whoa. terrifying. I shot the pier today, so we went down to the Santa Barbara Harbor to test it out. And you know, I'm pretty good on boards. I surf a lot and I snowboard and all of that stuff. Right. Um, and I got comfortable. It took me like maybe an hour to really be decent at riding and carving on this thing. And then I just decided to go flat out, full speed. There was no chop, fortunately. And just said, fuck it, and just shot the pier. It just went right under the pylons. And I can tell you, having these two like six-foot round concrete pylons, I guess they're wood pylons, go three feet on either side of me at 40 miles an hour, my heart jumped straight into my throat. I did not need to yeah. shoot the pier. <laughs> it yeah, was no. really cool. It's not I, I don't think... Fun. Truthfully, I don't even think I'd do that on a jet ski, let alone a stand-up <laughs> surfboard that I just procured. Yeah, it was it was it was very nuts. It was really fun. Pat, you're very very just like sheepish and kind of scared in general. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I think I'm a little bit. I would say honestly, it's just risk averse, right? Like I I I often find so. My uh, 16-year-old male nephew just well, – I guess all nephews are male – just got up here <laughs> yesterday. Not in 2020, um, bro. Not in 2020. <laughs> and he just does dumb shit constantly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. like on the boat, you know, I'm driving the boat at 30 miles an hour and I look behind me and he's standing up on like the, the kick step, the swim step. <laughs> and I'm Was just he like – pissing? He's taking a piss? No, he's just doing it because he thought it was fun. <laughs> and so I often find myself asking Forrest and him, uh, just like, what's the upside of what you're doing right now? Yeah, <laughs> you do ask me that a lot. What's like, the upside? Way <laughs> right. Like, if we're, if we're going to take a lunch break and you're going to, like, eat your sandwich, do, do you have to do it while you stand on the edge of the cliff? <laughs> Take two steps back. He does. This is what he said. Whatever, all, to all of our listeners, what you're hearing right now is a very real conversation that Patrick <laughs> and I have, I would say, on average three times an expedition. <laughs> yeah. He's like, Just, we're on lunch. Like, stand back. Don't go up the tree. You don't need to do that. There's no reason for it. <laughs> the only difference, though, is that you're a grown-ass adult and the nephew is a 16-year-old <laughs> dum-dum. So... <laughs> He doesn't okay, man. I'm I'm gonna pull my biologist card and break that down for a second. Oh, okay. So <laughs> here we go. It. Right, I'm a wildlife biologist, but I've spent my life observing wildlife, and I can tell you one thing reigns true for mammals. Right, when they are adolescent, they're young, they're dumb, and they're full of cum. Right, <laughs> so they are they are uh, they're full of testosterone. They're peacocking. They're showing off to get mates. <laughs> and as we get older and wiser, you know, first mm-hmm. of all, a few of them die off. And I'm not talking about with humans typically, but a few of them die off from being so young and dumb and showboating so much. And then the older, wiser ones, you know, they attract the girls. And then it's that nice balance of old wiseness with young dumbness. <laughs> and I, uh, 
I just never grew out of being a 16 year old <laughs> kid who was full of testosterone. What about the old and wise part? I, I don't, I don't feel any of that vibe coming from you either. I think it's just still young, dumb with more facial hair and a bigger Look head. Look who's talking. What? Look who's talking. What? Me? What? <laughs> no, but speaking of that, Forrest and I are working on a, a television project uh, not related to Extinct or Alive and that has to do with uh, seals. Mm-hmm. Nice. And if, during the early development of this, you know, we, I, Forrest, I was talking to Forrest about, you know, what's interesting about seal behavior and, you know, he was just running me through all the fascinating stuff. One of the things that I think is amazing is when seals, male seals are in their adolescent phase, they get kicked out of, what what do you call it? Uh, the community they live in. They're the, the harem. The harem. harem or the pod, yeah. Right. So basically the equivalent of a 16-year-old male human <laughs> at right. age 16, you get kicked out yeah, by yeah. The, 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 the alpha male and you go to another area and live with a bunch of other 16-year-olds in something called a bachelor <laughs> pod. That's right. That's it's hilarious. a frat house for seals. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Wait, so what's the behavior? Like, are they just drinking White Claw and, like, having toga <laughs> parties? <laughs> yep, that's pretty much what they're doing. I, I, yeah. I'd like to Dude, say I you're wrong, but it, in in, uh, in grandiose terms, that's almost exactly what they're doing. They're working with each other. They're learning to be alphas. They're fighting with each other. They're broing out. They're hunting together. They're fishing together. Mm-hmm. They're they're trying to, trying to slam chicks. I mean, they're just, they're doing their thing. But really, what is the function of it? It's to eventually get big, strong, and tough enough to to go back and challenge the alpha of their pod or another exactly, pod, exactly, exactly, or another pod, or create their own pod. And that and the function is, you know, just like in a frat house, when you're stuck around a bunch of other men, you know, you're all going to compete, you're all going to try and get bigger and stronger and better. That's why everybody in the prison's working out, right? Because you want to be the biggest, strongest guy in the yard. Right. Um, and it, it's basically that same sort of mentality. And when you are the biggest, strongest guy in the yard, or at least you think you are, then you take off to go fight the next boss. Mm. Right. Now, so, how- Peter, let me yeah. ask you this. Mm-hmm. If when you were 16, you were sent off to a bachelor pod with 40 of your buds, yeah. you were going to go live on your same <laughs> island for two years, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What, what, what do you think would have happened? I, I would be dead. I would not be here today, for sure. <laughs> Certainly. I, I, I agree. <laughs> so, I'm, sometimes I'm fascinated that I'm alive today from some of the shit that I did I fell off a car one time that I was hanging on. <laughs> Forrest just spit his drink all over his that computer. That was so close Peter to me spitting spit everything. <laughs> Dude, I fell, off a, <clears throat> I fell off a car one time. I was hanging on to the outside, like the, the one inch that is outside of the windows with both hands on both sides. And my buddy just keeps speeding up, speeding up until he's going like 35. And of course I can't hang on. And I just let go and I wake up in the fucking hospital with a giant, like I was bleeding out of my head and all this shit. As an adult, thinking back on that moment, I had like a bowl in my sock, like a bowl for weed, like just all this <laughs> shit. I'm like, what? how did I survive? Like, how am I not in jail or dead? So certainly if I was, if I was left to my own devices on an island with only other idiots, I would be dead for sure. Where so, would you rank, Peter? Would you be, would you be the alpha seal or would yeah. you be bitch seal? I mean, you guys know me. I'm like, I'm loud and obnoxious, very selfish. True. I would definitely. No, here, here's the thing. I know that because the first day, just I've known Peter now for almost 15 years. The first day, if he wasn't respected as the alpha, he would fight till death either. So he would either be <laughs> dead the first day or proven as the alpha. He'd be like, you oh, know, he's God. just such a loud asshole. By the way, so I just, I finished my PBR and I pulled out my cell phone as I was listening to you guys. Okay. And I went to text my, my said 16 year old bachelor pod nephew <laughs> to, to bring me another pbr out of the fridge and instead i sent that text to a different person named charlie who is a uh, a tv producer that i worked with 10 years ago so By he's way, probably pretty curious charlie the nephew would have just sent back a middle finger emoji anyways dude so like what you, he's he's gonna be getting he probably thinks you're cool though dude you have that hat on he's got oh be, he's been ripping on this hat the whole time yeah we all the whole have time. all of our fans everybody oh, i posted thanks. a picture on instagram <laughs> there have been hey, there hang have on been hang on rippage. look what just happened and Holy he shit. opened it for me oh my oh, god. god he opened charlie. it 
Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie, you're a bro. Charlie, you're on. You're the next guest. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask. So I'm switching now from LaCroix to Boochcraft, a delightful alcoholic Ooh, kombucha. Yeah. If um if we keep if we continue to drink at this rate, and it is it is three o'clock in the afternoon here, mm-hmm. who's popping their shirt off first? I'm, Probably Peter. Yeah, I mean yeah. I'm real excited that my redness has turned into a golden brown tan. I'm done. Even with that bot? I know. It is. It's like, you know, you, 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 mid-30s, you just, you just grow tits. It's fucking crazy. None of, none of us are proud of what's going on. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's funny. I, I have some buddies that make a, a big uh, football podcast, and um, I was just listening to it yesterday as I was mowing the lawn. Ooh. Dude, Mowing you are turning lawn. into fucking John Candy from Summer Rental. I <laughs> swear to God. That's also the most like American statement I've ever heard. I can just imagine you riding your mower listening to a football podcast drinking PBR. <laughs> Dude, PBR in the cup holder, football so podcast, true. shirts optional as Forrest would say. Yeah. But they were all talking about, you know, now 13 weeks in that, you know, they're all pretty fit guys how just every one of them, there's four of them, have just let their diets go to complete shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's tough, man. I'm telling I, you, it's it is tough. <laughs> Yesterday I went down, so a buddy who's not from Santa Barbara was heading through Santa Barbara and he's a big volleyball player from college, um, played really competitive volleyball. And he's like, Hey, you want to meet at East Beach, which is where the volleyball courts are? And he's like, Yeah, I just see my old stomping grounds, you know, we'll hang out for an hour, watch a little volleyball. And I was like, Yeah, not really my thing, but totally come to see you. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got down there, and I literally, I won't say I did a, t- a double take. I would say I did a quadruple take. He has gained, and granted, it's been maybe it's two years. It's called a double chin take. Dude, <laughs> he has gained 40 plus pounds. He oh, is man, just, that's crazy. He looks awful. Just during quarantine? <laughs> I don't, I didn't ask. I didn't have the heart to ask, but I, I have to imagine a lot of it is during quarantine because he's like, I haven't been outside. I haven't done any exercise. I'm like, yeah, we can tell. Dude, uh, <laughs> I think what happened is that. When we all first entered into this, we all thought it was going to be 15 days. I mean, yeah. pretty much everyone <laughs> yep. thought right. we're going in for two weeks, uh, yep. you know, whatever. So we kind of just got into some bad habits, drinking some PBRs, Dude, eating some beer, pizza. White Claws. Yep. Just... And then it's hard to get out of that. Oh, man. <laughs> it's... It is difficult as fuck. I've been eating Taco Bell uh, like once a week. I ordered $30 of Taco Bell with one other companion the other week. And That's more than 30 items, you Fat it's pig. not, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Everything's not a dollar at Taco Bell. Chalupas are three fifty, and I had two. And <laughs> what? They used to be a buck ninety nine, dude. Taco wow, Bell inflation. is is flourishing in this goddamn pandemic, man. The line at Taco Bell is like thirty <laughs> fucking cars long every dude, time I go. They can barely keep the meat hose stocked. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> the just sh- shout out to Taco Bell, the most pleasant. Taco Taco Bell employee ever I experienced the other day. She was just like, hi. And I was like, it was Saturday night. And I, she's like, how many hot sauces do you want? And I'm like, well, 10 of each. And she like gave me a thousand. And I was like, how is this person so fucking happy working at Taco Bell at like 11 on a Saturday night? But I love it, man. Fuck it. We, we know you've brought it up every time. <laughs> All right. Man. So Forrest, what's, uh, what's been in the news this week, man? Oh, there's some good stuff floating around. I think the one thing that has uh, come across my desk the most is, have you guys seen this drone shot of 64,000 sea turtles migrating towards Rain Island in North Queensland? Yeah, man. Amazing. It's crazy. Crazy footage. So tell, tell us what's going on there. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's an absolutely stunning image, first of all. Um, and it's just this image. If people haven't seen it, we'll post it on the, on the social media, but there's literally thousands and thousands, scientists estimate 64,000 sea turtles Crazy. migrating towards this island in North Queensland, and they're doing that to lay eggs. Right. So this, this is what sea turtles do, right? We know the green sea turtles have nesting areas, and they return to these nesting areas year after year. But what makes this image so fantastic, and you know, we've talked about this a lot with regards to quarantine and all these other phenomena, but is that this is, this is more than twice as many turtles as were previously believed to be seen in the area. So wow. they were like, oh, you know, we're, we're estimating that, I don't know, 30,000-ish sea turtles come to this area every year, which is a great number. And then, boom, one day, 64,000 of them show up approximately for this incredible phenomenon, all to go to the beach to lay eggs, which is, I mean, it's just stunning. Could yeah. this have anything to do with sort of, you know, it's been a recurring theme since uh, quarantine. Uh, could this somehow be related to that? 
I, look, I, I think it could be. I don't think there's any uh, proof of it. this. This is anecdotal, but here's how I'd look at it. In, in Australia, sea turtles are protected, but those same sea turtles, you know, travel to Indonesia where they're hunted very, very uh, heavily and, and many other yeah. island nations, the Solomon Islands and places like that, where they are a, a reliable food source. So if we're in quarantine and the animals are not having pressure and hunting pressure put on them, perhaps they feel a little bit more relaxed and they are able to group more easily and go to an area more relaxed. And maybe it's not, it's not so much that, the, that what we're seeing is more turtles than we think were ever there before, but rather the behavior in which the turtles are exhibiting is a more relaxed behavior. So we're able to see a lot more of them at once and go, oh, look, there's actually this many. It's not that this is, you know, this is not exactly how it works, but it's not mm-hmm. that 30,000 are coming during the day and we're missing 30,000 at night. It's just there, there are way more than we realized, and they're more relaxed in nature because there isn't this pressure on them. So they're all just moving together at the surface and in, in directly in visual, you know, dile- directly in line of sight. Let me ask you this, though, since they're going to lay eggs, is it only, is that 64,000 all females? Uh, no, it wouldn't be. It would mm. be a mix. Um, they, they are mating and then laying eggs. Um, you know, there is oh, so, gestation. So, so it's like a fucking party. An it's orgy, an orgy, dude. Too. It's oh, an yeah. orgy. It's a turtle orgy, for sure. No Very doubt about relaxed, it. Very relaxed, dude. They're just hanging out, sipping White Claws. Maybe they're going to meet the seals, the 16-year-old <laughs> seals, after they do the orgy. I mean, that and, is crazy to think about. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And, and think about, you know, like I said, these animals travel to New Caledonia, Vanuatu, the Solomons, Indonesia, you know, up into Papua New Guinea, all, all of these other places. And they're all coming together back in this one area in Australia you know, they haven't seen each other for a year or more, mm. getting together, mating, laying eggs. Um, and, and it's great because, especially in this day and age, right, like sea turtles, they're one of those poster children for conservation where everything you see is like a straw getting pulled out of a turtle's nose or, a, yeah. you know, a turtle eating a plastic bag and choking to death. Mm-hmm. And so it's nice. I hate ecophobia, right? It's not, I don't think we yeah. should ignore the negative stuff because we shouldn't. You know, right. we, we need to acknowledge it. But... Seeing another turtle eating another plastic bag is a page turner. No matter no matter whether you're a biologist like myself or just a complete loser like Peter or Thanks. someone in the middle. Preach. But no matter who you are, it's a page turner. But to see a bit of good news and to see something exciting like this drone footage of 64,000 turtles in one spot, that's exciting. And it's a positive thing. And, and to focus on the positive is really nice for conservation. I mean, Hell yeah. I mean, let's extrapolate this out to, to, to think about think about this in human terms. Imagine that you spend your entire year, if we all just spend our entire year, just sort of roaming the countryside or the woods, foraging, just doing our best. Maybe you see another human, you don't do much. And then once a year, we all just came together in Ibiza and <laughs> and, it, and it was known that everyone who was there was there to have an orgy and reproduce. Yep. yep. Be great. Fantastic. Yeah. That's the life I'm hoping for post-pandemic. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's what's going to happen after. I think West Hollywood might look a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Forrest, I've got a story. This was not in the news, but it's it's a story that I've been following closely. So <laughs> my, my, uh, my, <laughs> my mother and stepdad live in uh, South Carolina. Okay. And he, during uh, quarantine, has decided to just turn his entire backyard into a garden. So he's planted a ton of vegetables and they have a lot of squirrels, <laughs> right? Okay. So the squirrels are just, there, just devouring the saplings, just, just running rough shot, just having a squirrel <laughs> orgy in his garden at all times. <laughs> 64,000 so, uh, <laughs> All these yeah. fucking animals fucking, what's going on? Wait, so get this, right? So he got, uh, he got some of these, uh, there are these humane squirrel traps where it's very much like the trigger traps that you'll build in the field, mm-hmm. right? Yep. They come in, they take a, a bit of the peanut butter, the, the door falls behind him, and then yep. you relocate the squirrel. Yep. So he had already read that squirrels are actually kind of territorial and they'll often come back, so you should relocate it pretty far from, from where you live. Like so 10 miles or more, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. really far, yeah. Well, so he's been meticulously <laughs> – I fucking can't believe he's doing this. He's obsessed with it. He's in his <laughs> early 70s. Wow. So he drives – takes this screeching squirrel that's in this shoebox, essentially, <laughs> into his car, and he drives it over this three-mile bridge, right, okay. to an island, and he frees them on this island. 
Okay. Right? He's creating he's he's creating squirrel lord of the flies. <laughs> yeah. but please continue. So he's he, and he's of course keeping count and my mom is sort keeping of avidly uh, enjoying this and and making fun of him behind his back. And so he's at this point he's I mean this was as of a few days ago. He'd relocated like 45 squirrels. Oh my god. And wow, that's yet, crazy. Yeah, Shit. so the number of squirrels hasn't really gone down it's mm, like this yep. never-ending fucking influx of squirrels <laughs> right. so he's starting to get pissed about this <laughs> so he catches a squirrel last week i don't know why he did this but he painted a little yep. red dot on the squirrel <laughs> yep little biodegradable paint i was about to suggest this <laughs> yep and he did get by bio- he's an animal lover so like yeah he no he i know d- yeah. used the biodegradable paint Drives the squirrel across a three-mile bridge <laughs> and frees it on an island. It's got a big red dot on its ass. <laughs> yep. Do you think the squirrel came back? It sure did. It yes, sure it did. It did. <laughs> it fucking came back, and Jesus. he caught it again. <laughs> no, he caught it again? Yeah. That squirrel has learned nothing. Learned nothing. This bridge, this bridge isn't like a land bridge of, like, nice terrain. This right. is a bridge with a sidewalk on each side for runners and a highway going through it. Oh my god, that Dude, is that, a determined squirrel. Now that <laughs> that squirrel is climbing over like the top, whatever wires are there. Do they love that shit? That squirrel's like, oh, this is like a game. This is a gymnasium. He's putting me here. I'm coming back. He's putting paint but on I, my butt. <laughs> this is fantastic. You know, what my favorite part of that story is is the fact that your 70 year old stepdad just just came up with his own and executed flawlessly a relocation and monitoring method that, you know, that's like a tried and true proven. I was literally going to say, here's what your dad needs to do. Go and get some biodegradable paint, hit them on the tail, see if they're coming back. And he just, he just came up with it and just did it. it. And And he's like, look at this. And I mean, that is a method that people have used for, for, you know, decades to try and understand like how animals move, and your your dad just did it. He's your dad is well, literally a better scientist than I am already. <laughs> well, I'll tell you that I know that he didn't Google it because every time I call his cell phone, he answers it as if just a household item started ringing, and he's confused <laughs> by it. So I don't think he knows how to use Google. Right, but Forrest. My question for you is like, what mechanism? I mean, they're not using sense. You know, they can't smell from three miles away. Correct. What the fuck are these squirrels using to know how to get back to that place to eat that tomato plant? Well, you don't even know this, but you just un- unwittingly opened up a huge animal mystery because that is okay. something that we don't know the answer to. Wow. And, wow. you know, if your stepdad can figure it out, that would be a huge thing for <laughs> science. But look, I mean, we, we know basic things about the animal and its morphology, right? We know what kind of sight it has. We know what kind of smell it has. We don't know anything about its directional abilities. How, how, how does a squirrel know that after being put in a cage, stressed out, harassed, right? There's no way it's like looking out the window going, that landmark, that landmark, that landmark. You know what I mean? Right. It's, right. It, it's, this thing is frantic. It's panicking. It's got a squirrel brain. That's literally a, a term, squirrel brain. Right, right. You know right, what I mean? For right, something right. being called stupid. And yet somehow it figured out the intricacies of highway travel to get back to your stepdad's garden to eat his plants i mean it's it's fascinating stuff and nobody knows how how they're doing it what what's sort of the most accepted theory i mean are do or what are some of the theories like is there a sixth sense that that mammals might have what do you think yeah i think there's a couple there there are a couple theories you know um uh, electroreception the ability to read earth's magnetic poles and navigate based on that like our sixty four thousand sea turtles we know they do that for sure that's how they return Hmm. um there, there's certainly a lot of theories about mammals' uh, use of electroreception, whereas we know it definitely takes place in birds and certain reptiles. We don't know much about it for mammals, but we believe cer- certain scientists believe that they have that ability based on the frontal cortex of their brain. Um, landmarks are another one. Territory and range is another one, right? So if we think maybe that squirrel, and I don't believe this to be the case, but maybe that squirrel's range, his natural range, includes all the way across that bridge and he's made that commute half a dozen times in his life right so when he gets dropped off he settles in you know his heart rate decreases, and he goes oh i know where i am i just need to go back over here to this part of my range right. now the thing is with what you're saying with the abundancy of of the with the abundance of the squirrels the odds are not likely for that right if there's a, a gazillion squirrels their ranges get smaller and smaller and smaller because they have to protect you know more area against more right. more intruders so 
the odds of that squirrel having a three mile range across a freeway bridge, I say are pretty slim, but <laughs> you know, these are all theories that, that exist. And none of us, none, no one really knows is the truth. No one knows how that animal got back to your dad's lawn. And it, it, it furthers my thought process and belief that animals are just overall, regardless of the species, even though some are dumb, some are clever, whatever, but overall, they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Smart or, like you said, some type of sixth sense, sense more in tune with their surroundings in the environment, maybe like humans used to be, but now we're so distracted by shitty podcasts. No great, fantastic podcasts like ours. <laughs> Forrest, uh, I saw one, and I know you're going to be interested in it. Are you done with your questions there, Pat, about the squirrels? I mean, we've been yeah, on yeah. for 45 minutes. And <laughs> I can learn nothing. No, I'm just Squirrel kidding. talk. <laughs> Um, did you see this thing, Forrest, about the ancient crocodiles and how they walk? Have you seen this? No. About this? What, t- tell, tell me. Uh, no. Tell so me apparently, more. Tell me more. I love uh, crocodiles. I know. I know. You think they're like stupid and fantastic and you like to like wrestle with them and shit, right? They're, per- they're perfect animals. They well, haven't changed for millions of years. <laughs> no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Ancient, Harry, he was a friend. Ancient Sorry. crocodiles, I think, could take you on because apparently they walked on two legs like dinosaurs. Wait, what? What, what species That's of right. ancient crocodile? This is amazing. What species of ancient crocodile is this? What? What do you mean? Like, do you want the, the, the actual genome? Uh, You're useless to the, me. I, <laughs> I'm looking I'm this up. No, no, yeah, it's, it was a study at the University of Queensland, and they're okay. basing it on on footprints they saw uh, in South Korea, and they believe uh. that some sort of ancient fucking big crocodile uh, was walking on two feet about 110 million years ago. I you, will tell you something that is a terrifying thought. Dude, it really is. And and they found it based on footprints that they found. Well, he, here's the thing, right? Bipedal animals typically are fast, right? Like really fast in right. short bursts. Mm-hmm. Um like think of an ostrich, right? Like T-Rex. you're not going to outrun an ostrich <laughs> or a T-Rex, sure. They are fast in uh, short uh, bursts. Real quick, that's going to be important later. The T-Rex what okay. you just said. Yep. All right. Interesting. All right. Yeah. I like yep. that. Sorry to interrupt you, but wow, nope. what a perfect no. segue. Yeah, That's great. Yeah, buddy. Two but, the PBRs. Okay. So, so two-legged animals are quick in short sprints, right? I think the only thing that, that keeps the crocodile from being literally the ruler of the planet is the <laughs> fact that they walk on four stumpy little legs and have to be near water. Put yeah. one of those things onto two legs, give it a jet board, let it go 40 miles an hour, <laughs> and... And you have arguably the I'm mean, well. First of all, it's a dinosaur, obviously, but it's 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 the top predator on the planet. I mean, that is super freaking cool, especially you, on that forty mile per hour uh, surfboard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll I'll be interested when when they publish their study here for you to read it and and see what you think because you know I don't know. To me, this is a little bit uh, this isn't passing the smell test for me. I haven't sure. read anything, but right, right. you know what? A hundred footprints from 110 million years ago. Right. I don't know about that. No, and totally. And that's the thing is we can, you know, I'm sure they have methods to support their statement, but that doesn't mean that it's accurate, right? They, what's to say that they didn't have tiny little front legs that didn't leave or, or huge right. pads of front legs like an elephant, right? That didn't leave an impression because there was so much weight dispersal over so much surface area. I mean, that's the thing is like, it's all guesswork when it comes to something like looking at footprints and making it up. But I'll tell you this as an anecdote, we used to, some fr- buddies and I used to talk about what would be the most terrifying thing in the world. And it was tree crocs. It was a crocodile <laughs> that used to climb up trees and body slam you and then eat you. <laughs> And, uh, you know, can you just imagine walking through a jungle and you just get the people's elbow from a 12 foot crocodile and then he just gobbles <laughs> you up? That's that, yeah, that no, is the only thing more terrifying than a two legged croc. Well, speaking about bipedal lizard creatures, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. You guys ever seen Jurassic Park, the original? No. Indeed. What? Many, is that a movie? Many times. Huh? Yeah, it's a film. It's a film, Peter. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a famous scene where, the, you know, the T-Rex uh, chases them in a Jeep. Mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum's in the Jeep saying weird things, and yeah, he chases them <laughs> really fast, really fast. You know, we were taught as kids, and for years, uh, scientists told us that the T-Rex ran up speeds up to 45 miles an hour. Mm. Well, what if... Uh, there's one scientist in London at the Natural History, History Museum named William Sellers who's calling bullshit. 
on that. Oh, on this I've seen. Controversy. I know a little okay. bit about this. Yeah. So they did a, a pretty in-depth study using a lot of advanced uh, like kinesiology modeling and physics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And basically what they came up with is that the T-Rex undeniably in their mind was incredibly awkward, an incredibly awkward mover uh, carrying that huge body and giant skull around mm-hmm. almost certainly was horrible on its feet. And they think it maybe was able to get up to speeds at about 12 miles an hour yeah. for a short sprint, would likely fall over. <laughs> <laughs> the average human can run, the average human can get, a, their their sprint is 15 miles an hour. Right, right. <laughs> and so based on this, they think the T-Rex was not this fearsome apex predator at all, that it was more you know akin to like a turkey vulture, that it was almost certainly... Uh, a scavenger. Really? Yeah. That mm-hmm. shatters my vision. So I, I've actually, I've actually seen and and read some of this, and it is when you look at the morphology of a T Rex. Re- take Hollywood out of it. Like try and take your preconceived notions of what a T Rex <laughs> is out of it, and look at that thing. Look at its big fat tree trunk legs <laughs> and its silly little like body. It's so bottom heavy. It's basically a giant dodo, right? <laughs> yeah, Look it is. The shape ah, of a T Rex. It's the same shape as a dodo bird, and we <laughs> knew that the dodos were so slow and dumb that we could walk up to them and bop them on the head for sport. Right. Like, that's a T Rex is just a forty foot tall dodo with uh, with big teeth, <laughs> very sharp teeth, and definitely. But but dude, the T Rex must have had hops with big legs like that. No way. Its body was so heavy, and its head was so heavy. Uh, that they think it was literally just a carry-on scavenger, um, which sort of takes a lot of the that fucking ruined my that ruins my childhood <laughs> retroactively. <laughs> heavy body, um, heavy head sounds like somebody who's with us right now. <laughs> they did. They did go on to say that despite that, they do still think, based on the morphology, that it it would have had the strongest jaw in the the history of the planet. Oh, interesting. And also that each you know those little arms. You know, people make fun of the T Rex's sort of little little arms. That based on the way that the joint is constructed and the size, they think that if you had given a T-Rex a 400-pound dumbbell, it would have been able to do curls with a 400-pound dumbbell. That's Man, awesome. that, that T-Rex <laughs> would be just fucking throw that dumbbell at your dumb head. <laughs> Jesus. It totally ruins everything that you think of about the T-Rex and... If, if you're a child listening to this, first of all, go and slap your parents because they shouldn't allow you to listen to this. And, and secondly, secondly, not. like, I'm sorry that we just ruined the rest of your upbringing in dinosaurs because it, it is it's not fun to think that they were slow and dumb. I do remember Jurassic Park being like, this is what dinosaurs really were like because it was so <laughs> realistic and lifelike when they put out the movie. Right. And it still holds up when you watch it. You're like. This is fucking crazy. This looks good 30 years oh, later, yeah. whatever the hell it is, 20 years later. Way better than the subsequent, the ones that they put out recently with, that's all CGI. Oh, I hate They're that shit. awful. Ugh. They look like cartoons. Oh, the God. newest one is just such trash. Like, it's running around a museum the whole time. Like, it's oh, two God. hours of this dinosaur in a museum, and you're like, what is he doing here? Right. Oh, it's, dude. God, right. it's a Jurassic mess. Park 3, I believe it was, or I don't know which, which it was one of the most recent ones in the last couple of years or whatever. But the, yeah. the the female lead actress has high heels on the entire fucking time. She's like right. running around the goddamn grasslands, the jungle with these high heels on. I'm like, this is ridiculous. You can't fucking put some decent shoes on this actor. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a mess. So there, I got another what's in the news that I was really excited about. Um, yeah, man. I'd Let's love to tell it. you guys about. And it made me, what made me think of it is... Um, you know, Patrick brought up the the new science and how that's changing our understanding of, um, you know, of, of T-Rexes and animals just from new, new science. But I saw some physical science that combined with new science that I love. So about a year ago, there was a toucan in Costa Rica. They named her Grisha and a bunch of teenagers found her and they beat her with sticks. Right. And they, 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 mm. I don't ask me why kids do this kind of shit, Fuck but they off, do. Kids. They beat her up with sticks and this toucan lost the top half of her bill Aww. and she was going to die. Like you, the animal cannot live with half its face missing. And it was really, really sad. And, and you know, this, the story like went partially viral and it was kind of one of those, like, how dare they type thing. Yeah. Um, and now I just saw this past week that Gracia who lost her bill a year ago, mm-hmm. had a has received a 3D printed prosthetic bill nice. and is almost fully recovered. Like it's it's she's accepted it, she's taken it in as part of her body. 
This young bird um, can live in the wild again. She's able to pick things up, preen with it. She can even sing with it. Wow, um, sing with it? That's crazy. She can sing with it, yeah, because, you know, their toucans are very, very vocal, yeah. Right. And uh, one scientist even said that she, it's improved her ability to sing. I don't know if uh, what is basing that on. <laughs> she but, sounds like a young Tony Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> But it's just so cool to see this, like, oh, you know, yeah. 3D printing wasn't even a thing 10 years ago, really. Right, and now, right. you know, we're using it to build prosthetics. And yeah, we, we all know that we're using it to build prosthetics for human beings. And that's great. And I'm not taking away from that. But the fact that someone took it upon themselves with the kindness of their heart to build a prosthetic bill for a toucan in Costa Rica. And it's literally saved the animal's life and, and fixed everything. I don't know. I just think it's no, so great. I mean, like a yeah, lot of times, great. a lot of times on this podcast, I'll, I'll complain about humans and just how shitty we are. But honestly, <laughs> this is a good one because I love when we use our, our technology and bullshit to actually help out the universe and earth and shit and animals, especially because I love them. Yeah. Go people. You know, go people. Forrest, did you see the thing out of Hawaii uh, near the island of Kona or the area of Kona where they, <clears throat> they photographed – and we'll post the pictures, but a seven-foot white tip shark Whoa. that had these weird uh, little <gasps> white marks all over its back. Did you see this? Mm. I did. There was some – I saw – I just saw the headline. It's an oceanic white tip and it's got – like I, I don't want to I don't want to ruin the surprise if I'm wrong, but doesn't it have like squid marks on it or something? Yeah, so it had all these white marks on its back, mm-hmm. and upon further inspection, scientists discovered that they were suction cup marks from a <laughs> giant squid's tentacles. An actual giant squid, like the real deal. We've only seen like a few of those, right? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Correct. But mm-hmm. based on the size of the the suction cups, uh, you know, the tentacles would have had to have been huge, and they're saying right. it's the first definitive evidence of shark shark versus squid battles <laughs> so who won you think i mean the shark did because the squid is eaten and gone well i would guess neither of them are dead that would be my guess so okay. let's break it down for a second so oceanic yeah. white tip right we're talking about a large pelagic aggressive shark these so for anybody that doesn't Sorry, know pelagic pel- what's a pelagic God, you're a cretin. I'm, this um, is for the po- listeners. I know what it is, po- obviously. <laughs> pelagic <laughs> means <laughs> they are transient. They they live ah. out in the open water. They don't hang out in one particular place. Typically, they're just they're they're out and moving with the currents and with the tides, and they're never really stopping in one spot. Nice. So it's a large pelagic shark. Um, it's it's most most famous for being the shark that ate um, everybody that went down on the USS Indianapolis. Um, they're, they're, oh. you know, they, they're known, they're pretty smart. They're known to follow ships, blah, blah, blah. Killed 300 wow. people overnight. Patrick and I did a TV show on that. No big deal. That's um, nuts. And More yeah. on that later. We could do a whole podcast on that. Oh, it's I amazing. Know, right? Yeah. But so there are these large pelagic sharks, but the thing that we understand and slash know about oceanic white tips is they are surface dwellers, right? These are mm. sharks that stay in the top 50 or 60 feet of the ocean. They don't go down deep. Mm. Well, what do we know about giant squids? We know that they are deep sea creatures. Right. So there's something that we don't know here, ladies yeah, and yeah. gentlemen. And what the, and the, I mean, you know, it begs a couple questions. Who was in whose niche? My guess would be that the giant squids probably came up to the surface during the nocturnal migration, which is a real thing. Every night, animals come up from the deep sea up to the surface to feed and go back down before the sun comes up. Hmm. Um, it's actually the greatest migration on Earth. The most bio mass of animals moves every night globally than anything else. Um, but anyway, so I, my guess would be squid came up, shark went in for the attack, and, uh, and yeah, who, with that, what was the outcome? We don't know. And I guess it begs the question, who attacked who? Right, because right. if the squid's coming to the surface to hunt and it sees the shark, did it go for the shark or did the shark go for it? Are the sharks just always awake? Or are they just always like prepared to fight? Or are they sleeping? And this is that a possibility that the squid came up and attacked totally. so, the squid? So they, um, so sharks sleep while moving. So they're they're in kind of um, like a trance and mm. they're swimming with their you know swimming in a kind of a switched off mental state more or less, and that's they have to do that because pelagic sharks like the oceanic white tip don't have the ability to pump water over their gills Hmm. so if they stop moving they stop breathing so they are Ah. always moving you'll never see a shark not moving um except for benthic sharks which is a different type of thing but um yeah so my you know look no one knows the answer i'm just breaking this down i got really excited and started over talking patrick but (laughs) nobody wants to hear his bullshit anyways (laughs) my thing is just thinking that 
logically, maybe the shark was sleeping, cruising. Squid came up, basically looked like a giant lure, attacked mm. the shark. Shark switched on, probably, probably laid some bites on it and took off. But maybe the opposite, right? Yeah. Maybe oceanic white tips go down to 300, four, I'm sure more than that, but maybe they go down to 3,000, 4,000 feet to the sea floor and hunt down there and we don't even know that dude that's crazy how little we know about the ocean we know less about the ocean than we do about space i feel like <laughs> oh, definitely than the moon yeah we have actually mapped a smaller percentage of the bottom of the earth's oceans than we have mapped of mars which is also insane because there's 100 percent creatures we could call them ocean aliens that exist in this unmapped territory that that are there for sure. And we're concerned with the aliens that come from space. It's a weird... What? You don't think that I, there are aliens uh, in space? I, I saw the I, way you looked at me. I do, but I don't think they're coming from Mars. I didn't say <laughs> Mars. You said Mars. Are we talking about Bruno? V- what are we talking about here? Mars in space? What are you talking space? about? <laughs> oh, fuck off. You guys, you guys are just, everything's whoosh. That hair, dude, should be catching my jokes, but it's just going right over the top of your dome. <laughs> I can't see people. myself on this new thing. I don't know what my hair looks like. It's not great. Pat looks significantly drunker than he did at the beginning of the podcast. He's all dopey-eyed. Drunker? Doey-eyed. Yeah, drunker. <laughs> More drunk? Fuck off. Oh, all right, guys. After Peter's angry rant, there, I think uh, I think I do have to say that it's time Ooh. for what? I know that drum roll. That never gets old. Oh, I love it. What is it, mate? The battle royale. <laughs> God, we're stupid and lame. Yeah, all right, we are. <laughs> oh. What do we got today? I'm stoked about this. I know that uh, you've been working on this like it's the cure for cancer, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. You're you're sipping your third dirty martini. Um, okay. The, okay. The plane starts. It's just you, you've hit a patch of turbulence, and it's it's a problem. Oof. Now you're taking a private jet. You have to get somewhere, and there's only you know there's only a few people on the plane. It's you and three others, and then the you know the pilot. Sadly, okay. as you crash into the just the harshest part of the Amazon jungle. The pilot dies. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you and three passengers survive. Okay. But you're now going to have to live and survive in the harshest environment on the planet. Oh, man. In the Amazon, it's going to just be brutal. You have nothing with you. All of the luggage burned up. You can pick who are the three people you want to be the other passengers on that plane, but it can't be a family member, a friend, or anyone that you've ever met. Oh, wow. Can I pick who I want the pilot to be? Because I have a list of people I want to be dead. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. Nope. It's not about who you want dead. It's who you want to enter into the worst survival situation ever with for three months. Uh, And if you don't mind, I'm going to go first. Do oh, it. man. I know you got something chambered here. It's almost a cheat. All right, go ahead. (laughs) Well, look, when it comes to survival, I, I know a little bit. It's mostly stuff I've picked up from Forrest. Uh, but <laughs> and, I don't know a lot. Other, and other survivalist hosts that you've worked with, not sure. just me. <laughs> but, you know, I've met Forrest. I'm friends with Forrest, so I can't pick him. Right. Correct. So I'm just going to go with the low-hanging fruit. I'm going to pick Bear Grylls. I knew he was going to say Bear Grylls. God damn it. That just makes me feel dumb. <laughs> I'm what, better than Bear. Him? I am you better him? than Bear. <laughs> oh, I don't doubt that, but he's the only other one that I've, I've never met that I, yep, uh, that I can pick. What, what is he going to teach you how to do? Like, is he going to teach you how to eat bugs and shit and disgusting shit and poo? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you know, any, anything, how to eat, how to, how to make clean water. Yeah. Everything. He is very good at what he does. Uh, yeah. What, which is what entertaining people and eating like live bats and bugs and shit. I, I don't Why think he does so anything. Why are you so grumpy again, Peter? How I'm not right grumpy. Here? You know, a, that I no, am frumpy. the top contender. Yeah, frumpy. <laughs> I'm a curmudgeon for sure. But I am very serious about Battle Royale. I almost consider it my segment because I'm obviously, I've won them all. And wow. Pat's very low. Very, very low on the totem pole. <laughs> so I get annoyed when he all makes right. stupid picks. Patrick, this is your Battle Royale. Are we, are we going snake draft style or are you going all three first? No, snake draft, snake draft. Okay. 
All right, okay. so I'm going to give Peter the second pick because he is red face okay. drunk and yes, he really he's gonna is. the lady from drunk. he's going to pick the lady from Taco Bell this weekend. <laughs> Dude, I would as long as she brought the Taco Bell with um on the plane, the the full building. Uh so I'm going to go with uh this is a tough one. I I mean honestly, I was considering him because my dictionary of celebrities isn't that big in my head, but I do know one <laughs> Forrest is showing us his 7.0% alcohol by volume Boochcraft. He's opening his sixth one. Don't worry about um, that. You, congrats, you Forrest. Stay, stay on topic, gentlemen. Stay on topic. Sorry. I'm going to go because I know that this person, I've seen him on television handling <laughs> some of the most, the, the toughest conditions. He's been stranded on an island. He knows how to make friends with inanimate objects. I'm going with Tom <laughs> Hanks. <laughs> Cast it's away. because... Because he did a film where he well, he's also like a a real, he's a notoriously Wilson. nice guy. Like he'd be fun to hang out with. I do think he actually probably did some survivalism training for the movie, uh, or either that, or he's a really good actor. I don't know, one of the two. So mm, I'll pick I'm not Tom sure Hanks. Which one. He's very friendly. <laughs> I've heard he had I'm COVID sure. already, so he wouldn't bring COVID. <laughs> he wouldn't with bring him. COVID with him. Okay, yeah. good right. pick. Good pick. Yep. Yep. Well done, and I Peter. don't want him to die. I don't want Tom Hanks to die. I feel like he's a national treasure. He is. And I am doing society, human civilization, a favor. You're doing a favor by dragging him into the Amazon for three months with you? Uh, he was yeah, just on the plane. plane. I wasn't dragging him there. He was on the plane <laughs> okay. by himself. Fair enough. Know. Fair All right. Enough. All right. Forrest is up for two back-to-back picks. Who do you got? Two back-to-back. Okay. Um, number one is the man who actually became famous for trekking across the Amazon. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Ed Stafford. He's like a British, well, I guess Bear Grylls is British. He's like another British Bear Grylls, um, <laughs> except he's really, I, I, I respect Ed Stafford a ton. He, um, he literally became famous as the, man, the first man to walk the entirety of the Amazon River. And so I think if anybody's going to survive in the Amazon, that's a foreigner and I'm prefacing that because of my next pick, um, he, uh, it's going to be Ed Stafford. He understands the intricacies of surviving in the Amazon. I think it took him like over a year, um, and he was just on foot walking the entire time. Okay, another rational, rational, lame, very square pick. That's fine. Why do you need to bring another survivalist with you, broologist? Survivalist. Well, for, so I just looked it up. It took him 860 days, one step at a time, to walk through the oh, Amazon. Oh shit! So three months okay. is going to be nothing. Yeah. So he spent okay. 860 days surviving in the Amazon. He's a good pick for me. Yeah. All right. All why right. do I, Why do I need him? Because he spent 860 days in the Amazon. <laughs> he's got. I've spent experience. maybe a collective three months total, and every time with tents and all of my own equipment. So um, <laughs> prepared. Yeah. So, yep. so leading with Ed Stafford. Okay, all right. And then I get back-to-back picks. So my next pick, <laughs> stay with me sure now, do. is the gentleman from Primitive Technologies. Do you know who... Do, are you guys familiar with this? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Primitive Technology no. has 10 and a half million subscribers on YouTube, and it's this dude, Australian <laughs> dude. Shout out. You, just, you, got, you, got, you got to look this up. And listeners, you have to look this up. It, if you haven't seen it, it's this guy that builds... I'm not going to understate it here mansions out of nothing like he starts with a stone (laughs) builds a fire fire treats his stone sharpens it to a point cuts down a tree builds a log (laughs) cabin insulates it with mud builds a swimming pool up out i mean it's like it's like bonkers dude i'm not kidding like go and watch what this guy does it is bonkers crazy the stuff he builds uh, that ovens is gonna be hard to beat it's it's like (laughs) ovens it's insanity like he he built an underground swimming pool out of mud. I mean, this guy just, he fucking gets it. Um, and so the primitive, I don't know his name, but he's the guy that runs the primitive technologies things on YouTube. And he is really cool. And I feel like he would definitely, one, I get to learn a ton uh-huh. from him and Ed mm-hmm, Stafford, mm-hmm. but two, he'd make us a very mm, nice house. Here's, to live here's in. the problem I have with your pick so far, Forrest. Uh, okay. And I'm, you know, it, it's, it's a jerk. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I mean, it, there's a lot of strong egos in, in, so far in your pick. You and then these two guys, everybody's going to have their own opinions. They're going to want to do things a certain way. I really don't think that you're going to be able to work constructively together. I think 
that you guys will probably separate on day one or two and just be doing your own thing, and you for sure will die. That's because you don't know who my third pick is, silly guy. <laughs> You're going to have to wait for that, <laughs> Not Peter. Not yet. Yeah. All right, so Forrest with two very pragmatic picks. Peter Always. has one actor. Uh, <laughs> Dude, he who are you going to go with? He had who are you going to go with, Peter? Okay, so my pick? number two, because, I mean, I have faith in the, that the universe will guide me to wherever the fuck I need to be. Whether that's death or out of the Amazon is up in right, the Right, that's why you stood on the back of the car when you were a teenager. I did not sure. stand. I was hanging with okay. fingertips. Um, Perfect. <laughs> so my second pick is <clears throat> because I I love music. And there's only one. And I also think it'd be a joy to be around now. Justin Bieber will be my second Jesus. pick <laughs> because he's got a beautiful singing voice. He does. And, and he will he will keep the morale of the whole group, me, Tom Hanks, and Justin up by crooning as we trudge through the and we will okay. not we will not have big egos. I will stand uh, yeah, third. I just want to point I will out be back. you said that oh my god. I will be third. I'll i I'll happily walk behind both of them. I think Biebs will be in front, <sighs> Hanks We've- in second. And then me We've third. already established if you had to go to a bachelor pod when you were 16 <laughs> that you would fight till death no, on no. your first day. Not if I had Justin your... not if Justin Bieber was there crooning me mate. You would beat him to death the first day. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It's true. What would you do? What would you do when he started insulting you for how loose fitting your jeans were? Excuse me? Are you saying yeah. that I wear mom jeans? I, I am, yes. What a the fuck? Bit. You're, fr- you're from the Midwest. My jeans. I wore the, when I was at your place last time and you cooked that terrible food, I had tight <laughs> my tightest fitting jeans that I own. On, <laughs> they were sir. painted on. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, boy. All right, so Patrick, I've got it. Bear Grylls, who's going to really help with all things survival. He's going to tell us which plants we can and can't eat. He's going to help fish. He's yep. going to teach us his ways, and within a couple of weeks, I will be nearly at his level. Mm-hmm. So... Here's where things get tricky. We've got all these plants. We've been eating them raw. About two weeks in, I'm just going to be bored. Yep. yep. And (laughs) I'm going to start having a wandering eye. If I can't get some variety in my diet, I'm going to start looking at questionable berries and questionable (laughs) mushrooms. So I need someone who can provide me the spice of life that I need with some variety in my diet. Okay. So I'm going to go with executive chef Tal Ronan from <laughs> a, 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 a restaurant called Crossroads in LA. It's, okay. it's a vegan restaurant where I swear to God, you can eat there. And you, you I had the lasagna. I couldn't believe it was vegan, man. Oh, it really man. felt but, but like you, I was, Have you met Tal? Because that was your I've own never, stipulation. I've never met him. I've never met okay. him. Fair enough. I know we're going to be eating a lot of plant, and I feel like he's really dialed in when it comes to cooking plants in interesting ways and transforming them. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I've got Bear Grylls. I've got Tal Ronan. And then morale is going to be huge. Three months is a long time when you've got mysterious rashes, different things that are going to come in the Amazon. Mm. So we're going to need a jokester. (laughs) Um, You're the jokester, aren't you? I'm okay, but I want someone funnier than me. So I'm going to go with my favorite comedian, Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, my God, Uh, dude. It's it's twofold. He's going to keep us entertained, which will keep morale high. But the other thing is his entire comedy bit revolves around him, just everything annoying him. (laughs) Everything makes him furious. And so I know that he will complain more than I will. Okay. So that if there were to be a mutiny, Mm -hmm. he would be the first one killed. Dude, honestly, that's brilliant. He's very intense. I've heard he's the same way in real life, but genius the way you spun it around. He'll be the one that gets killed and eaten first. (laughs) He's the guy that gets offed. Yeah, that's, exactly. it's funny because when so you started team. explaining that I thought you were going to say a doctor because you're like there'll be a lot of problems and I was like oh, it's a really good pick like a doctor is a good person to have on staff Shit. and you're like comedian and I'm like oh there it goes <laughs> yeah shoot mm. by the way that show that we went because we, we went to one of his shows Patrick oh yeah we did it was it's so cute God, it, was, God. it was so much fun you guys oh, we went, a good time. So, yeah. we, we took, went with a crew at the, to the uh, Santa Barbara Bowl, which is just like mm-hmm. uh, a much better version of like the Hollywood Bowl in L.A. Mm-hmm. Big outdoor amphitheater, uh, totally sold out. He just yep. crushed. I mean, everyone uh, was like mm-hmm. people's sides hurt legitimately mm-hmm. when we sure. then went to the bar after that and drank 15 picklebacks each. <laughs> we sure did. All right. What's your last pick, Peter? So you've got Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. The Beebs. Who's your second? And Beast. Justin Bieber, okay? Yep. He's tatted yep. up, full body tats. He's very handsome. He can croon 
us as we walk through the Amazon jungle. That's the eighth time you've used the word croon. <laughs> I've had a few, he's, he's not white claws, but dosakis today. Um, so my third pick, and this is going to be my, my pragmatic pick. Um, he's been in the survivalist field for 20 years now. Uh, very well known, handsome, handsome man. So we'll all be very good looking, which I'm, you know, if we, in case we come across any, any crazy like tribesmen who want to kill it, you know, good looking people don't get killed by tribesmen. (laughs) And that is, that will be, um, the host of survivor Jeff Propes will be my third pick. (laughs) Because I thought no, you were going to say like Les Stroud or I, like I one of these too. like really solid dudes. He's been in survivalism like, for 20 Trump. years. He's fantastic. He's got a better personality than Bobby Flay easily. <laughs> well, but he doesn't know anything about survival. Are you he kidding knows- me? Have you seen the way that he fucking is? <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> literally not a, he literally narrates a game show. Yeah. Dude, I don't care. He can narrate us walking. It will be specific, articulate, and informative. It would be fun if you just made the rule the first day and you just told Probst, like, I want you to narrate everything I do or I'm going to beat you to death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, man, we're not going to have a Lord of the Flies situation like Forrest's dog shit crew. Sorry. Go ahead, Forrest. Oh, wow. <laughs> On that note, the reason that mine shall not be Lord of the Flies, keep in mind my first pick, Ed Stafford, solid experience pick. (laughs) Second pick, primitive technology guy, solid comfort pick. Third pick, Margot Robbie, because she's really, really hot, and I'd like to hang out with her for three months. (laughs) In case you have to repopulate the Amazon with humans. That's right. That's right. Uh, Patrick, Pat, so Patrick and I have this argument constantly, because I think she's the hottest woman in the world, and he thinks that she's she's not. Um, Mm -hmm. So what it's, is it? I mean, let's hear. So, so I want to hear why you contest that she's the hottest woman in the world because it's apparent why why Forrest is right. Why do you think? Thank you, Peter. Why do you thank think you. that she's not attractive? Me? No, somebody else. <laughs> it's just hard to. You know what? It's one of those things where it's hard to separate when you just look at someone. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Okay, she's attractive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For me, it's hard to separate the personality from the looks. Uh-huh. And after taking an entire cross country road trip with her in a small Volkswagen bug, what? I can't separate that. Wait, is that true? Wait, what the fuck? Of course not. I've never met her. <laughs> oh. uh, she's just not my type. <laughs> okay, okay. That was uh, that was really well played, though. <laughs> so your so your type is just male and bearded. I mean, what are you talking about? What? I mean, if you look at our podcast. But- I only have one type. It's five foot three and looks exactly like my fiance. Yeah, well oh, played, sir. Nice. That'll she keep you very attractive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go over this one more time mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the battle royale. Okay. Who have you got? Lay it on us. Patrick, you went okay. first. Go. Right. Who are your guys? I have Bear we need Grylls. A vote. Bear Grylls. He is going to help us survive. Bad pick. Tal Ronan is going to give us variety of food with our various vegetable matter. Delightful. And then Sebastian Maniscalco is going to keep us entertained <laughs> and be the first one killed if there's a mutiny. Nice. Mars. Nice. Peter, go. I have the beautiful crooning voice of Justin Bieber. He's now been pushed up to number one in my list because of his voice. <laughs> Tom Hanks, who is a national treasure, uh, beloved worldwide, and will be a joy to walk through the Amazon with, uh, hopefully naked. And third and finally, I have... You forgot. You forgot. No, I didn't. What are you talking about? Who is about? it then? It's Stop delaying. Who, who I'm not delaying. I don't know what you're talking about. I am not Say fucking delaying. No, Say what are you third. guys talking about? It is the one and only, very experienced survivalist, Jeff Probst, host of Survivor, <laughs> the TV show, in its 40th season, 41st next uh, year. All right, Forrest, go ahead. Who's yours? And finally, I have Ed Stafford, the man who walked, walked the Amazon for experience. Wait, did he walk I or have- did he work? <laughs> Why don't you, oh, you yeah. just shut up, guy who's How many only drinking five percent alcohol? Did you have? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I have uh, the primitive technology guy for comfort. He's going to build us a mansion, and we're nice. all going to live happily there oh, with Margot Robbie, who's a delight. Nice, nice. Okay, so here's the thing: I fucking lost. Yeah, I'm did. last in every category yep, because yep. Forrest is going to win just the the real vote. Peter's going to win the pity vote. <laughs> no, and I'm right in the goddamn middle, <laughs> dude. You are. Definitely... And if you agree with that, go on to the Wild Times podcast uh, on iTunes. Leave us a review. Um, and if you leave us a review, you might win a prize. 
Peter, take it away. Ooh, we have a prize winner today. This is for the $100 gift card to Cool, which was never claimed weeks ago. So we are going to give it K-U-H-L, Cool. They make outdoor gear. The best. This is going to go to C Beers, C Bears 81. He left a review back in April, but it is a random draw. But he left a nice one. It's really long, and uh, I'm not going to read it all, but... It basically says that this podcast is a must listen. You gotta listen. You won't regret it. Retep is the professor. He's fucking awesome. And the other two are idiots. He's paraphrasing. Wait, no, this is really what it says. No, I'm just kidding. So what's his handle though? What's his handle so he knows? His or her her ha. C Bears 81. C <laughs> Bears 81. You had me at cheesecake, comma, cheesecake wins is the last lines of the review. C Bears, hit us up on uh, on Instagram. Uh, send us an email. Peter will Peter will connect with you and we will make sure that you get your prize of one hundred dollars to cool. You have thirty days to claim that. Yes. And for anybody else that's listening, go ahead and leave us a review. If you do leave us a review, you're automatically entered into the winning pool. This week, our giveaway is a grip to you cell phone case. It's the cell phone case that I use on every expedition. It has a little kickstand, and most importantly, has a little thing that you can put your hand under so you can grip it for uh, filming things without dropping it. Because God knows I drop my phone everywhere we go. So mm-hmm. when you're up um, really high, when you're up really high in trees for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> did you use it on the 40 mile per hour surfboard today is my question. I did actually. See? I, did. I knew it. Yep. Smart. Yep. Did Didn't drop here. it once. Yep. Forrest, what's your what's your Instagram handle, by the way? Because uh, you, you're constantly mentioning these cool vids and stuff that you post. What, what is it? Oh, my, my, my IG. You can find it by searching my name, the one and only, Forrest Galante. <laughs> my yep. handle is Forrest.Galante because I screwed up when I first made Instagram and didn't know... Uh, <laughs> Didn't, I somehow deactivated the account for a space Galante. So, Groologist. Yeah, it's uh, forest.galante. It's a lot of fun. Follow us there. And of course, follow us on um, the Wild Times Pod, right? At the Wild Times Pod, Peter? Yep, at Wild Times Pod everywhere else. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Pornhub, all that shit. Grinder. It's a good podcast. Enjoyable. Enjoyable. Yeah. I am hammered. I g- I've got to say, too, it was really nice to sign on and see both of your quarantine haircuts looking so fucking shitty. Oh, it makes fuck me says the really guy good. in a hat. Fuck off. I know. I still have that hat on. Dude, months. it's affecting my behavior. I'm, I'm like, I'm noticing that I'm lashing out more because I'm embarrassed <laughs> with the, with the sight of my face in the mirror. Because I look bad. like one of just the members of like a shitty band, like Chicago. Let's see it. Pop that puppy off. Let's go. Come on. Holy shit. I used to think you were handsome. I really did. I used to think you were handsome, and it was just because you had a good haircut. I'm realizing now it was nothing but the haircut. It's bad, but Forrest, right now yours is feathered to the nth degree. So <laughs> Mine looks fucking great. You two idiots look terrible. You're, you're a clown show, and you're single. Boy, you should get that taken care of. Oh, my God. Fuck off. All right. Love you guys. Get a haircut, both of you. You guys are great. Thank you, listeners. Good night. Love you guys. Good night. I'm talking to listeners. I hate you, too. Good night.